Okay. Whew. Let's let's begin. Um, welcome to week number twelve. Uh, I cannot believe um, we're gonna we're gonna do a couple weeks. We're gonna do arithmetic sequences this week. Next week we have geometric sequences, and then I think we have a couple weeks of probability, and that's it. Week seventeen we're gonna review for the final exam. Week eighteen is the final exam. Final exam is just multiple choice questions. Boom, just like we had we had the same thing first semester, correct? So going to be basically the same way that we end second semester. So it'll be an easy way down. But I will tell you, um, next week, there are a couple problems on next week's assessment that are, whew, they are, they are pretty good. Now, there's a couple this week, too, that I think are going to stump some kids, but we'll talk about them. All right. Um, this week, we're going to be talking about um, arithmetic sequences. What is an arithmetic sequence? Well, an arithmetic sequence is any sequence of numbers. Last week, we just talked about sequences. This week, we're going to be specific. We're going to talk about specific sequences. A, a sequence is a, an arithmetic sequence is a sequence of numbers that go in order, and they always go up or down by the same constant value. That's what makes an arithmetic sequence. So for example, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, dot, dot, dot. This is an arithmetic sequence. Why is it an arithmetic sequence? Because if I added the same number, so for example, if I added 2 each time, that's what makes an arithmetic sequence if you keep adding the same number. So an arithmetic sequence. So is this an arithmetic sequence? 10, 5, 2.5, 1.25, no, it is not an arithmetic sequence. This is a geometric sequence, but it is not an arithmetic sequence. So not arithmetic sequence. Now, how do we, how do we write an equation for an arithmetic sequence? There's two different ways that we're going to write them today. We're going to write them as, um, as a recursive and as now I'm losing my mind because I can't remember the other one. Recursive and <laughs> explicit. Thank you very much. So the explicit one is super easy to write. So let's say I gave you an arithmetic sequence. Let's say I gave you um, 6, 8, 10, 12, dot, dot, dot. This is an arithmetic sequence. This is how we write an explicit formula a sub n is equal to the first term plus, and then I always do it this way, I don't write it like they do, d n minus 1. Now, you will see on my on the assessment this week, yes, we are reviewing right now, correct. You will see on my assessment this week that you cannot leave n minus 1 in your answer. So in this problem, what two pieces of information do you need in order to write an equation? You need the first term, so a sub 1, and you need the d value. What is the d value? The d value is the distance between each number. And in this problem, it's 2. So if I write this out, if I just plug it in, a sub n is equal to 6 plus 2 n minus 1. You cannot leave the n minus 1 in your answer. This is not correct. So what are we going to do? We're going to multiply through here. So I end up with 6 plus 2n minus 2. So my answer is a sub n is equal to 2n plus 4. Boom. There's my equation. Now, how can I check myself? Well, plug 1 in here. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 4 is 6. Is 6 my first term? Yes. Here. This is my fourth term. So if I plug in 4, I should get 12. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 plus 4 is 12. This does work. This is how we find an explicit formula for a list of numbers. So I'm going to have you guys try one. OK? So what if I gave you, well, maybe I have one from tonight's assessment, uh, recursive. OK. Oh, we better talk about recursive first. Now, if we're going to do a recursive formula, 
it's a whole lot easier. <laughs> a recursive formula, what most people won't do is they won't give me the first term. So for a recursive formula, you always have to tell me what the first term is. So let's go back to this, the, the previous problem. What was it? Six, eight, 10, 12, dot, dot, dot. So in a recursive formula, you have to tell me what the first term is. So if I, if I said, write this as a recursive formula, you would say a sub one is equal to six. And then a sub n is equal to, and then all you do is you just write down a sub n minus one plus or minus your d value. So this, this is the recursive formula for this problem because you're, you're taking the, the term before. So the first term is six and then six plus two would give me eight. Eight plus two would give me 10 and so forth. So writing a recursive formula, fairly easy to do. So the first problem on tonight's assessment is this. It says write an explicit and a recursive formula for the following sequence. Okay, so let's do the recursive one first recursive. Okay, so I'm going to put that over here. Okay, in order to write a recursive formula, I have to tell the person who's doing it what the first term is. So a sub one is equal to negative four. a sub n is equal to a sub n minus one my, minus, oh, what's my d value? Uh, negative four, negative six, negative eight, negative two. So that would be minus two. So this would be how I would write my recursive formula. This is it. This is all you do. That's my recursive formula. So now how do I write the explicit one? Okay, now explicit is a little bit, I mean, it's not hard. So it's a sub n equals a sub one plus d n minus one. So my first term, negative four, plus my d value. Well, my d value in this problem is negative two, right? It, it's always going backwards two. So that's gonna be negative two, n minus one. Can't stop, can't leave this in here. So we're gonna multiply through here. So that gives me negative four plus negative two n plus two. So a sub n is equal to negative two n minus two. This is my explicit formula. This is my recursive formula. I just did problem number one. That's how easy it is. It's just being able to write an equation for an arithmetic sequence, an explicit and a recursive formula. All right, any questions on that? How I came up with either of my formulas? You guys good? Oh, the two is negative, you're right. Boom, because that was a negative 2n. Yep, that is, you are absolutely correct. Right, the, the explicit one you have to, right, you have to get rid of that n minus one here. This one, that this is just a subscript. So you wouldn't, so you wouldn't get rid of that because that's just telling you you're using the previous term. So this one, you do have to get rid of that n minus one. Well, a recursive one, if I asked you to come up with the next couple terms, then yes, you would have to you know, keep solving, but it doesn't ask you to do that. It just asks you, what is the formula for it? So that's, that's all you have to do there, okay? Yeah, and it's just how far you go up, correct. And then this one, we're subtracting two each time. So, you know, you've got negative four, then you got to subtract two, so that would give you negative six. You subtract two from that, you get negative eight. Subtract two that from that, you get negative 10. So it does work. The recursive formula does work. All right. So problem number two on the assessment this week are word problems. Oh no, Mr. Shankin, how can you give us word problems? Yep, they're word problems, okay? This is one of them. There's three of them for problem number two. There's three of them. So let's do this one. It says, Edgar is getting better at math. Yay, Edgar. On his first quiz, he scored 57. Then he scored a 61. 
and then a 65. So I'm just going to write down these numbers, okay? Because I don't, I don't know where to begin on this problem. So I've got 50, score to 57, then he got a 61, then he got a 65. Is this an arithmetic sequence? Yes. And it would be kind of goofy if it wasn't, right? <laughs> because, you know, we're dealing with arithmetic sequences. Okay. So, and then it says on the next two quiz, and 61 and 65 on the next two quizzes. So this is his first quiz, second quiz, third quiz. If this, if his scores continue to increase at the same rate, what will his score on the ninth quiz be? So I could go four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I could do that. And then whenever, wherever I finish, that's my answer. Or I could just use math. I could, I could, uh, you know, we'll do it both ways, but I'm going to do math first. So a sub n is equal to a sub one plus d n minus one. So my d value in this problem is four. So this is 57 plus four n minus one. So that's four n minus four, 57. So my equation, a sub n is equal to, what is that, four n plus uh, 53, is that right? Okay, so that's my equation. This is my explicit equation. I wanna know what the score is on his ninth quiz. So all I have to do is plug in nine here, okay? So four times nine plus 53 is equal to 89. So that's one way of getting it. Now I could have gotten it this way too. I could just keep adding four. So his fourth would be 69, 73, 77, 81, 85, 89. Now, nah. I could get the same answer doing it either way. Uh, right here, are you saying, could I plug nine in there, Allison? And the answer is yes, I could have. Yeah, I could have, I didn't have to, and this one I didn't, oh, I mean, I would have had to been here because I would have put the four in there. Yeah, absolutely. Nine minus one is eight, four times eight, 32, 57, 30. It, it, it would be the exact same thing. Yes. So you are correct. You could have put it in there. And since I didn't ask you to write an equation for it, you could have put it in anywhere you want, or you could have did it this way also. It makes no difference. Yes, correct. This one did not ask you to find the equation. So you you could have you could have did it this way if you wanted to. And I'm sure some kids will do it this way, or you could do it this way. It doesn't, doesn't make any difference for that one. Now, if it if it asks you to write an equation, um, then you do have to write an equation. Okay, but this one does not, so I don't have you don't have to. Okay. Now, what is the difference between a sequence and a series? Does anybody know? Sequence and series. Series is a sum. That is absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. So let's say I gave you this. Okay. So we're going to use this as my example. Six, eight, 10, 12, 14, dot, 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 dot. S of n is equal to what? This S means sum. So if I asked you for the S of 10, that means you have to give me the sum of the first 10 terms in the sequence. If I asked you for S of 20, that would be the first 20 terms in the sequence. So in this problem, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, somebody please add that up. What is the sum of the first 10 digits there? First 10 terms. Okay, what is that? Come on, somebody. Come on. Oh, come on. Stop it. Stop it. Just add it up. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> All right, 150. All right, 
It's 150. So if I added it up, I get 150. Okay. Now, there's a formula to find the sum of a sequence, of an arithmetic sequence. That formula, S of n, is equal to n times the first term plus the last term. That's what A sub n stands for. It's the last term over 2. So in this problem, n is the number of terms. So I want 10. So S of 10 would equal 10. And then the first term is 6. The last term is 24. Divide by 2. 6 plus 24 is 30. Divide by 2 is 15. 10 times 15 is 150. Oh, this formula does work. Isn't that cool? So you don't have to add all the terms together and you can get it. Now, I am going to really blow your minds away because I'm gonna show you how to do the last problem on the test this week, okay? So remember all of this stuff. Let's say I only gave you six, eight, dot, 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 and I told you that the sum I want, and the question that it asks on the assessment this week is how many terms would you need to add to get a sum 150? Okay. So, When you're using sigma, yes, you can, correct. So there are two problems on the assessment where all you have to do is plug it into the, the Desmos calculator, yes. Okay, now, in this problem here, remember, let's, let's pretend we don't know any of this stuff. Let's pretend we don't know any of this. Because there's a problem on your assessment that it just gives you a couple terms and it says, how many terms would it take to get this sum. Ah, Samantha. Right, you would use this formula. You would go n times a sub 1. Well, we already know what a sub 1 is, right? Plus a sub n, I don't know what that is, divide by 2 is equal to 150. Okay, we're going to set it equal to 150 because we know what the sum is. Well, guess what? We know what a sub 1 is, right? We know it's 6. Do we know the last term? And the, and the answer would be no, we don't. So how are we going to do this problem if we don't know the last term is 24? Do we know this equation? Do we know? Can we write an equation for this thing? but we can calculate it by using literal equations. We're not, because we don't know, because it's asking us for the n value, right? We don't know what the n value is. So we, so we don't know that it would be 24 because, ah, so I, and I'm not, I'm not gonna finish this problem because I want you guys to think about it for a bit, but guess what? We can write an equation for, even though they gave us just two terms here, we know we can write an equation for a sub n, can't we? a sub n would equal, what is that, a 2n plus 4? Oh, that's, and, and don't worry about it, Ella, I'm just trying to lead you in the right direction. I, this is an advanced problem, not everybody's going to get it, but... I'm just trying to get you on the right track here. So if you go n and then a sub 1, we do know is 6, plus a sub n. Well, we do know it's 2n plus 4 over 2 and is equal to 150. And I'm not going to show you how to solve this. This is up to you guys to solve. But it really, it really, this will really help you on the advanced problem on this week. And if you don't get it, that's fine. Not everybody's supposed to.
There is a practice this week. We're getting to it. Yes. All right. So here's the formula. We went through it already. Here's problem number three on your assessment this week. It says, find the sum of the following series. 4, 11, and we want to know what this, the sum of the first 16 terms is. So another way they could have asked us this problem is they could have said, what is S of 16? What do we need to know in order to come up with the sum of the first 16 terms? The formula is N, A sub 1, plus A sub N, over two. So we need n, we need the first term, we need the last term. Well, we know what n is. They told us it's 16. A sub one, I know what that is, it's four. A sub 16, I don't know what that is. Divide by two. So this is the only thing I don't know. I don't know what a sub 16 is. How? am I going to find out what the 16th term is? How would we find that out? Okay. I don't know what it is. Write an equation. It's exactly right. I'm gonna write an equation for this. What is this going up by? Seven, so four, seven. So this, the next term would be 18. I don't, wanna, I don't wanna take this out 16 terms. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write my equation. What is it, 7n minus 3, if I do it in my head? Is that right? If I put 1 in here, I get 4. If I put 2 in here, I get 11. If I put 3 in here, I get 18. So this is, this is the, the equation. I want to know what the 16th term is. All right, so 7 times 16 minus 3. Don't know what it is. 7 times 16 minus, oops, minus 3 is equal to 109. So the 16th term is 109. So now I can come up with this, the sum of the 16 terms here. Is that right? Is that right? Seven times 16 minus three, 109. Just doesn't seem right, but that's okay. So if I multiply this out, I'm just gonna cross that out, make that an eight. Um, so that's gonna be, uh, 413 times 8, or 113, 904. That is the sum of the first 16 terms of that problem. And it takes a little bit of thought, right? Because here's our formula. We know what n is. We know what the first term is. We can see it. We don't know what that the last term is, what the 16th term is of this sequence. So I have to come up with my equation, find that value, so that's 109, and then just plug it into a calculator and solve. So the, the sum of the first 16 terms of that sequence would be 904, okay? Awesome problem, I love these things. All right, the practice for this week. Uh oh, I, better, I gotta get my Desmos. Uh, let's see here. Let's copy that. Put that in there. Okay. Uh, right. If you don't have any variables, you can definitely put it in the calculator. Okay. So let me uh, see if I can get this to where it's supposed to be here. Um, let's see here. Uh, share application screen. Home tab. Algebra 2. Boom. All right. First problem. Now you're going to find some of these problems are super simple. Um, it says, write a rule for the nth term of the, the arithmetic sequence. Which ones could it not be right off the bat? Tell me two answers up there that really could not even be answers to this problem. A, because there's an exponent, that's not an arithmetic sequence. And C, it doesn't even have an n value in it. It's just negative 16 plus C. Um, plus six. So A and C are gone. So there's only really two terms that I can, that I have to check, but let's, let's go through how to write an equation again. If I was going to write an explicit form for this, I'm just going to go A sub N is equal to A sub one plus D N minus one. That is how we write an equation. The first term is negative 10. 
So I put it in there, negative 10 plus D. Well, it looks like I'm always going up by six, doesn't it? So my D value is six, N minus one. Multiply this through, so that gives me six N minus six. Got negative 10 there, so six N minus 16. All algebra. That's all I need in this problem is algebra, being able to solve that equation. Okay, so letter B should be the correct answer. Okay, any questions on that? How I came up with the equation 6n minus 16? Okay, writing an explicit formula shouldn't cause too many problems. All right, number two, it says use summation notation to write the series 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus blah, blah, blah for 10 terms. Well, summation notation means there's 10 terms there. So I'm going to go n equals 1 to 10. Okay. And then I just need to know what this equation is. So 2, 4, 6, 8. If I write an equation for this, a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus d n minus 1. Well, a sub 1 is 2. My d value is 2. And if I multiply this through, I get 2n minus 2. Looks like it's just 2n. That would be my sequence. So my answer should just be a for this problem. Hopefully. Does everybody agree with that? Uh, because the bottom says, where do you start? Okay. Where do we start? Well, we start with one. We're going to plug one in here. Okay. So if I plug one in here, two times one is two plus, then I put two in here. Two times two is four plus, then I put three in here. Two times three is six. So usually we always start with one on the bottom because that's the, the first value that you're going to put in. <laughs> so Elson, does that make does that make sense why we start with one because we want to because that's just our it just basically means that's the first term and then we put two in there for a second term and three and four and stuff like that okay all right number three it says evaluate the series now this one it has n equals three okay so you have to be careful n equals three. That tells me that three is the first number I'm going to plug in and eight is going to be the last number I plug in. Now, do I want to do this one by hand? I probably would go to my, my calculator um, to do this one, but I'll do it by hand. So that means I'm going to plug three in here. Five times three is 15 plus, and I'm going to put four in there. That's 20. Put five in there. That's 25. Put six in there. That's 30. Put seven in there, that's 35. Put eight in there, that's 40. Stop, because I just reached, this is where you start, this is where you stop. Okay, so I'm just gonna, so that's 50, um, 15 and 25, that's 40, um, 35 and that's 75. So 165, if my math is correct, now, did anybody use Desmos? Because Desmos would have Desmos would have done the same thing. Um, does everybody remember how to use Desmos on a problem like this? Okay. And you definitely can use Desmos anytime you want. I mean, you know, we learned the, a second formula today on how to find um, the sum of a series. Well, this does exactly the same thing, right? So if you wanted to use Desmos and you, instead of using the formula, you're more than welcome to do that. It's perfectly fine. Um, so either way is perfectly fine. It makes no difference to me. Number four, it says write an explicit formula for the sequence seven, two, negative three, negative eight, negative 13. Well, 
what is my sequence there? Yeah, you don't even have to write it down. I'll I'll know. Um, there there's some of them that you know it's like I think there's a couple of them that super easy to use the Desmos, and I I know if kids use it. It's it's you, you, I mean you could put it down that you use it. You don't have to. It makes no difference. Okay, so in this problem, we have it says um, write an explicit formula. For this sequence okay explicit means it's going to be a sub n is equal to a sub one plus d n minus one i need to know what the first term is that's easy it's seven it's right sitting right there plus the d value what is the d value in this problem does anybody know what is the d value what is the distance between each one negative five that is absolutely correct Make sure you don't use positive five because it is not. It is definitely negative five. It's going backwards. So this is going to be negative five, n minus one. I'm going to multiply through there. So that's negative five n plus five. So negative five n plus 12. And then it says find a sub 14. So then I have to put 14 in here. Um, negative five times 14. I, I'm going to use my calculator just to make sure I don't make a mistake. Times 14. Um, plus 12. And I end up with negative 58. So it looks like uh, letter C for my answer. Is that okay? You guys, do you guys agree with that? All right. As I said, arithmetic sequences, not too bad. I mean, they're, they're not. I did find a couple uh, tough problems. Um, Angela, you, you've done the assessment for this week already, correct? Did you find the advanced problems uh, pretty tough? Or were you able to figure them out pretty easily? A bit tricky. Okay, and that's what I, I mean, I didn't want to make them too hard, but I did I did put it in there where you, you really have to think about what you're doing to get them. But it's it's using everything that we're talking about. It's using, you know, explicit formula and the formula to find the um, sum. Those two things you have to be able to use. If you, can, if you understand them, you'll be just fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, this problem here, number five, it looks a little weird, right? Because it's in a table. It's like, okay. It says the table shows the predicted growth of a particular bacteria after various number of hours. Write an explicit formula for the sequence. Okay, so these are my X values up here. So really I'm looking at 19, 38, 57, 76, 95. So that's what I'm trying to write an equation for. Is it an arithmetic sequence, first of all? Because if it's not an arithmetic sequence, we don't know how to write an equation, right? So it is an arithmetic sequence. It's always going up by 19. 19 plus 19 is 38. 38 plus 19 is 57. 57 plus 19 is 76. So it's going up. So my D value, so my D value is 19. So my equation, again, a sub n is equal to the first term plus d n minus one. First term, I can see it, it's 19. So this is 19 plus 19 n minus one. 19 plus 19 n minus 19. Uh-oh, those are gonna cross off. I'm left with 19 n for my nth term. So it looks like letter D is the winner for that one. Okay, so we're halfway done with the practice problems. Any questions about any of the problems that I've done so far?
And a lot of it is just being able to write an equation of an arithmetic sequence. All right, next problem. Oops, <laughs> I'm on the wrong slide here. I can't switch the slides. All right, here, uh-oh, word problem. It says Gregory has agreed to donate $250 to Spring Valley High School for its library. In addition, he will donate $5 for every book a student at Spring Valley High School reads during the summer. The sequence um, shown represents the possible amounts that Gregory will be donating for the summer. So obviously, if nobody reads anything, he donate 250. If one book is read, 255. Two books are read, 260, and so on. Da, da, da. Okay. Which explicit formula represents this problem situation? Okay. Now, if you take a look at the answers, okay, some of them have the parentheses in there. I don't know uh, if you can leave the parentheses in there or not. Well, let's check it out. So if I was going to write an equation for this, a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus d n minus 1. My first term is 250. I can see it. Plus my d value is going to be 5, right? You could go up by 5, n minus 1. OK, so do I see an answer like that? 250 plus 5, n minus 1. Oh, looks like letter b is correct. So let's, if I multiply through here, let's see if any of the other ones match up. So that would be 245. So no, that wouldn't work. 5n, so 5n plus 245. So this is the correct one. So it should be letter B for that. Because the other ones, if I if I multiplied it through, it won't it won't do it. Uh, the answer is D on the practice for this problem. That is absolutely incorrect. All right, let me go check. Let me go change it. So the answer, so this is problem number six. Okay, so I got to go back into lessons. Thank you for um, that update. So let's go here. Um, practice, edit. Okay, so that was number six. Oh, the answer is D there. It really should be B, right? Okay, so I'm going to change it to B. Teachers do make mistakes. This teacher makes lots of them. <laughs> All right, so that should. Ooh, 22 people have already taken that practice. <laughs> and nobody emailed me and said the answer to that one was wrong. Oh, D does actually work out? No, it doesn't. I disagree with you. It does not. Because if you multiply through, um, if you multiply through, you would end up with 250 and then 5n minus 5. So if you put these two together, you end up with 5n plus 245. So that that does not work out. Does not. Now, oh, you're, you're, uh, if you used n as 0, reading 0 books, that would work out. Yeah, usually, yeah, I, I could see it either way. Um, right, it, it would be, but isn't it the first term? Oh, a sub zero, I, I hate it when they get into a sub zero stuff. Yeah, I could see either one of those being correct. Because if you thought of, if you thought of it as 250 as zero, and 251 was a sub 1. Uh, but you know what? Okay, and this is this is the way I look at it. They gave us the list. They and usually the first number is your first term. Second number is your second term. Third number is your third term. So that's why I would, for me, B would be the the answer I would go with because. They're giving us 250 as the first term. I mean, they wrote it out. Oh, 255 is a sub one. 
Let me read it more carefully. Um, the sequence shown. In addition, he will donate five dollars for every book. The sequence shown represents the possible amounts that Gregory will be donating for the summer. Boy, that one could go either way. That well. 250 would be donated if zero books were, were donated. So N would be zero. Huh. Yeah, exactly. And that, Allison, that's that's where I'm going with this. I could see, I could see anybody, yeah, I'm going with B. I could see B or D being correct. Cor yes, yes, but but Angela, if you take a look at their list, they have the first term is 250. Now, if they had 255 as the first term, then I would say, okay, uh, 250 plus 5n would be correct. But they have 250 as the first term in their sequence. I could see how you could go either way on this one. I really could. And I'm not, I mean, the only problem is I can't have two answers um, in there. Yeah, I, I, yes, I could see it either way. I, I could, I could go both, both ways on this one. There, that is, that is a very. I wish that if they would have written out the the sequence, I think it, I would have went with D if the sequence was written out because then I would have said, okay, two fifty would be zero books being read. Um, but with them writing it out, then it, then it gets a little tricky there. That's a tough. That's that is a tough problem. Very tough. Yeah, I mean it's not a tar, it's not a hard problem. It's just what do they what do they really mean? If they would have just said you know if they would have just started with two fifty five, two sixty, two sixty five, I I think it would have been a lot better. But we'll go with B. <laughs> All right. The next problem, number seven. It says write a recursive formula. Okay. What is the first thing when you see recursive formula? What is the one thing you have to put down? Okay, it is not correct if you don't write this down. So, what do you always have to write down when it's a recursive formula? A sub one, correct. You have to say what a sub one is. So, in this problem, before I do anything, I just write down a sub one is equal to eight. You have to write that down. And then it's just a sub n is equal to a sub n minus one, and then what is my d value? Plus two, because my plus my d value. So it's always, oh, minus two. Oh, no, plus two. It's always going up by two. So you have to tell you what the a sub one is, and then it says, and then find the next term. So that would just be 18, right? So 18 would be my next term. All right. Problem number eight. Which is an arithmetic sequence? Okay, so which one of those is an arithmetic sequence? Uh, for number, let's go back one. Uh, a sub one, a sub, so plus two, letter A. So number seven was letter A. Because part B looks really close, but part B, it says A sub 1 is equal to 18, which it does not. So they were trying to be a little tricky there. That was not correct. All right. Number eight. Which is an arithmetic sequence? 2, 5, 9, 14, 100, 50, 12.5, 3, 10, 17, 24, or negative 2, negative 1, 1 half. Which one of those is an arithmetic sequence? Letter C. 3. 10, 17. So I go up by seven, by seven, by seven. This one, I go up by three, then by four, then by five. This one cutting in half. This one multiplying by negative one half. So yes, letter C is the correct answer for this problem. This is an arithmetic sequence. Okay. And it is the only one that is an arithmetic sequence. All right. Next question. It says, how many of these sequences have a common difference 
of negative four. Okay, so which one of those has how many of these? Okay, so um, what I'm doing is I'm just looking here, negative 19 to negative 15 to negative 11, to negative seven to negative three. That's, that's going up by four, isn't it? It's not going down. So this one, this one has a positive four difference. 19, 15, 11, 7, 3. This one looks like it has negative 4 difference. 3, 7, 11, 15, 19. That looks like it has a positive 4 difference. And negative 3, negative 7. So this one oscillates between positive and negative. So, so there's only one of them that has a negative 4 difference. So B would be the correct answer there. Okay, so there's only one that has a difference of negative four. All right. Not even sure what number problem we're on right now. <laughs> I got all mixed up. Which number below is a term of this arithmetic sequence? 97, 91, 85, 79, 73, blank, 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 blank. Is negative 74, negative 75, negative 76, or negative 77? a term of that sequence. Oh boy, how am I gonna figure that one out? This one took me a little bit of thought about it. First thing I did is I, I thought about it and I thought, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna write an equation for it, an explicit formula for this one, okay? So if I did that, if I wrote an explicit formula for this, 97, 91, 85, 79, 73, so it looks like it's going down by six, right? So my first, so a sub n is equal to 97 plus negative six n minus one. So 97 plus negative six n plus six. So what is this, 103? So a sub n is equal to negative six n plus 103, is that right? So that was, that was my thought process. And then it's like, all right, how do I know <laughs> which value is going to be in there? So I thought about it a little bit and I thought, okay, what if I put 10 in here? That would give me negative 60 plus 103. That's not even, that's going to be a positive answer. It's not going to work. So let's try 20. So if I put 20 in here, that would give me negative 20, negative 120 plus 103. That's not even close to any one of these answers. So I just tried. 30. So I put 30 in here. So negative 6 times 30, that's negative 180 plus 103. What is negative 180 plus 103? Is that negative 77? So I just had to kind of use a little bit of thought process. I didn't know what number to plug in there. Um, now, could you, could you have done it a different way? Sure. I could have once I came up with my equation, negative 6n plus 103, I could have put in one of these values. I could have put in negative 74 here and then subtract off negative 103. And then I'd end up with negative 6n is equal to, uh, what is that, negative uh, 177? Now, does 6 divide into 177 evenly? And you'll find that it does not, okay? So that could not be an answer. It's like 29.5. So that's not an answer. So then I could try the next one. So if I put if I put negative 77 here, you'll see that that gives me negative 180. I think that's right, negative 180. And then if I take 180 divided by six, that gives me 30. So that is my, this is my value. So that one was a little bit tricky. You had to think about, you know, what was going on there. So either way is a good way. Angela, then you can plug in all the values for it. Oh yeah, right. You could write. So there's, there's different ways of doing this problem. But, I mean, there's not a lot this week. I mean, we had, what do we have? We have um, 
two different types of, we came up with two formulas, a sub n is equal to a sub one plus, uh, that was d, that should be a d, n minus one, okay, because this is our formula. And then we also came up with the sum. So s of n is equal to n a sub one plus a sub n divided by two. So these two formulas, everything that you see on this week's assessment can be solved using these two formulas. There's nothing out of, you know, that you would need anything other than that. I think, I think that was the last problem on the practice, wasn't it? Yep, that was the last problem. All right, any questions on that stuff? Now remember, tomorrow, there's not a day in between. <laughs> um, we do have a help session tomorrow. So if you do, if you do your assessment um, tonight and you see something that you don't understand, please come to the help session tomorrow. Um, I, I know number four is a little challenging. I know that. Um, I, I, I do. And for those of you that come to the help session tomorrow, I will do an example. I won't do one of the problems on number four, but I'll do an example like it so you can see the steps. And I tried to do it today, but some of you probably didn't get the whole thing. All right. You guys have a great day. And if you have some questions, please. Um, number two on 12B, I can't help you with that. That's uh, that's a multiple choice question. I, I don't like the way my, I don't like the way that um, assessment is set up in the first place, but that one, I think I, I took a quick look at it. Um, let me just jump in there. I don't, I don't want to give you too much hint on that. Um, yeah, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to write an equation. Oh, oh, it's a recursive one. Yeah, I'm just writing a recursive formula. Now, just because they said f of zero instead of a sub n, that should, you know. So when they say a sub one is equal to something, that's the same thing as saying f of one is equal to the same thing. These mean exactly the same thing. So, you know, don't let that, it's just function notation instead of summation notation. It's, it means exactly the same thing. So you have to make sure you give the first term and then go from there. All right. Have a great day. Bye.